Welcome to the second part of my rigging tutorial. I'm going to be rigging upper body parts and the neck. First we'll start with the neck. We'll create a neck drawing. I will connect the upper body peg to the neck. Uh, the neck drawing should be connected to the main composite of the rig. Connect it to the right side of the composite so that the head overlaps the neck. I'm gonna create a backdrop for the whole head part of the rig so then later you can manage the separate body parts better. See how easy it is to drag the whole head part of the rig now? Okay, I'm gonna trace the neck part. The stuff that I got from the library has some uh, color palettes too, so I'm gonna delete them later. They're not gonna affect our red. As long as you don't use the color from those palettes. I'm gonna be using the snap tools to uh, create a symmetrical neck drawing. Okay, the neck drawing is done. Now I'm gonna use the two point constraints to um, connect the head with the neck. Again, we need two peg points at the top and the bottom of the neck. If you don't wanna spend too much time connecting the pegs that are super far away, you can just drag the parent peg near the pegs that you want to connect. And this time, I will also use a transform limit node uh, so that uh, it doesn't have the squash and stretch effect anymore. I'm going to put the scale X to 0 so it doesn't squash. Reposition one peg's pivot point to the bottom and the other at the top. Remember to set the x-axis to 0 because uh, it's for a symmetrical drawing. That is at the middle of the grid. Now I'm gonna rename the pegs. One I rename as a uh, hold and the other as a uh, constraint because it will move with the head. Always remember to increase the exposure of the drawings to test your animation. I'm gonna connect the head peg to the upper neck peg. Now when I move the head controller, the upper part of the neck will move with the head. Okay, so far everything looks just fine. Rotation is good. Um, okay. I'm gonna create a backdrop for the whole neck constraint thing. Now I will draw the upper body part. I'm gonna be tracing this part. There are so many composite notes. It will randomly be connected to one, but as soon as you got many layers on that uh, composite layer, it will automatically be connected to that layer. Again, I'm gonna trace one side and copy paste it to the other. I just like my stuff to be symmetrical, you know? Cause when you flip that layer to the negative scale, it will stay the same. Because the two sides are identical. Because it's symmetrical, you get what I mean? Okay, so now I'm gonna create an invisible line. Because I don't want that part to have a line. So, yeah, set the thickness to zero and we're done. Now I'm gonna create the shoulder drawing. It'll be easier to uh, make the shoulders separate from the body because uh, you will need it for uh, other turns, body turns.
so we got our shoulder drawing now. Let's get to the deformation part. I will use the weighted deform node and peg layers which will act as the deformation points. Some of these pegs will be connected to the upper body layer and some will be connected to the waist layer. I'm gonna do the upper body part first. I think the upper body peg should be around there. I will create some more pegs to hold the torso in place. I will have uh, two pegs around the armpits and two pegs around the chest. I'm gonna rename them so you know which peg is for what. I'm gonna create some more packs to hold the parts uh, at the end of the shirt or uh, around the waist. I think the middle part needs a peg too, so it will hold in place better. I'm gonna create a waist peg layer. Ah, you see that? Now the hip moves too and the upper body bar bends nicely. Uh, the waist peg should be connected to the body peg. Remember, body is uh, different from the upper body part. See what I mean? The upper body peg will bend the upper part part of the body and the body peg will move the waist too. Uh, okay that doesn't look really good. It looks too sharp and stiff. So I'm gonna uh, change the positions of the ho peg holders a little bit. When you move uh, the chest pivot points far away, uh, it looks better. Okay, so far it looks better. The hip part bends nicely. Now I'm going to do the same kind of deformation for the shoulder part. one point at the top middle I will use this pack to move the shoulder and the other will be used to hold the armpit part in place Okay, 
I'm gonna duplicate the uh, shoulder and the whole part. I'm gonna start rearranging the nose a little bit uh, because uh, it's getting a little bit messy. To make sure that the two sides pivot point is uh, symmetrical, I'm just gonna add a negative in front of the number of the pivot point. I will create a backdrop with the whole upper body part. I'm gonna start making controllers for the upper body, the body, and the waist part. Remember to connect the controllers to a separate composite where, which will have the uh, vi visibility node so that they don't render, they won't render in the render view. I will use the share function script so that the controller will move with the upper body pack. Uh, before I do that, I'm gonna connect it to the master pack. Now, the upper body controller works. I will also create controllers for the two parts of the shoulders. Good! And now the other side. I'm gonna create a controller for the body.
you can reconnect nodes, you can reconnect controllers to create a hierarchy, and uh, the packs will move correctly. Okay, everything's good. Now, the upper body part is complete. In the next part, I'm gonna rig the arms. 